Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day, there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And I am so looking forward to talking with my guests today. Of course, I always look forward to talking to my guests, but we're going to be talking about something that every business needs to know. Any person who is in business, any mom, dad, volunteer coordinator, all of these things, they need to know this because it is something that is so important and makes doing business, working with people so much easier. So please join me in welcoming Jeff Barch to, Barch to our program today. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing today? I am doing fantastic, Deb. It is so cool to be here. Perfect. I love it. Well, let me tell people a little bit about you and then we will dive into this. So Jeff Barch is a visionary storyteller, marketing strategist, and founder of Story Greenlight. With over 20 years of experience in the entertainment industry and online business, Jeff has helped shape content for clients including ABC, NBC, Universal, Disney, Apple, and many others. Not that he's name dropping. Jeff's commentary has been featured on in major publications, including Time Magazine, USA Today, and the Associated Press. Through Story Greenlight, Jeff and his team empower experts and professional advisors to tell their stories, serve more clients, and expand their impact in the world. He believes that the power of story is within reach of everyone and that human connection is everything. So again, Jeff, welcome. Awesome. Going to be great. The, it's going to be I, fantastic. I, 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 I really like talking about this stuff because, you know, it's kind of my thing. And it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. So I always like to ask my guests how they got to where they are today, because I think it's a fascinating story from everyone. So tell us a little bit more about how you discovered that this is your passion in life. Sure. So here's the thing, you know, when it comes to business, we all want our business to thrive. And we all know that communication has to work mm -hmm. in order for business to work. But it's really easy to communicate in a way mm -hmm. that falls short right. and doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, our business suffers or it might even fail, mm -hmm. which is why it is so incredibly important that we communicate in a way that elevates our message in a way mm -hmm. that creates human connection, because that's how business thrives. Mm -hmm. And creating human connections is exactly what strategic storytelling does. Mm -hmm. So to your question, in terms of how did I figure out that this is my thing, um, one could look at my bio and say, well, you, you probably figured it out over 20 years in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, I realized, I realized that it's been something that I've been doing virtually my entire life. Right. When I started, uh, and it actually started when I was a little kid mm -hmm. playing piano, learning mm -hmm. how to play piano. And um, I started, I first started when I was four years old, mm -hmm. picking out notes on the piano mm -hmm. and turning into melodies. I started playing by ear. I got, I was classically trained. Mm -hmm. And when I learned more about the piano, I started getting more into, uh, for people who are familiar with classical music, I really moved towards Bach and Mozart because- yeah. They are uh, super technical and mm -hmm. you can you can just play what's on the page. You can mm -hmm. play the notes and you can get everything right and you mm -hmm. can just do that. And mm -hmm. you're and you're pretty good. If you right. got the notes on your page, you're, mm -hmm. you're good. But and it's that totally, missing something. Yeah, well, I could. It could. Mm -hmm. But when you're a kid, when you're a kid and you're seeing you, you see there's notes on the page mm -hmm. and you're playing the notes on your page. And everyone around you says, Jeff, you're such an amazing piano player. Oh, have Jeff play the piano. It's the, he, he's amazing. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, it kind of goes to your little head and mm -hmm. you think that you're all that. And there was a day 
that uh, there, there was a day that I was getting really, really frustrated about the fact that every Sunday morning I would go to church mm -hmm. and we would sing songs that had five verses or six verses. Right. And every single verse was played the exact same way. Right. Every single and time. And we all know looking in hymnals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, yep, the, the, mm -hmm. Those stacks mm -hmm. of words. Mm -hmm. just those you have to remember which one you're on. Mm -hmm. and, and you're going, oh, uh, how many more verses do we have? Mm -hmm. Oh, just shoot me now. Mm -hmm. I was bored out of my skull. And there was a day when uh, one of the ladies who was one of the church musicians, um, she uh, yeah, she came to me and mm -hmm. I was actually playing, sitting at the piano and mm -hmm. probably playing some Bach or Mozart mm -hmm. or something like that. And she said, you know, Jeff, it's all well and good to play what's on the page. Mm -hmm. But when you get older, you need to learn, you learn to play from your soul. Mm -hmm. And when I heard her say that, I, I was a, probably in fourth grade or something mm -hmm. like that. So I was maybe like 10 or 11 mm -hmm. years old. I was polite, mm -hmm. but in my head, I was thinking that has got to be the stupidest thing I've ever heard right. in my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm playing the notes on the page, mm -hmm. right? And the, the, the fact of the matter is she was right. Right. Mm -hmm. She was 100% right. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was no one moment when I realized that she was. Mm -hmm. It just happened bit by bit over right. years and years. And mm -hmm. the way that looked was when people, instead of saying, oh, Jeff, you're such an amazing piano player, mm -hmm. and I'd walk around and strut my stuff, mm -hmm. people would say, hey, Jeff, the way that, thank you for playing that song. Mm -hmm. That was the song I needed to hear today. Mm -hmm. Or the way you play that song mm -hmm. made me think about the words in a new light. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, someone came up to me and said, Jeff, your music has brought me into an encounter with God today. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So it was one of those things where I, you know, it's you, you realize that you're connecting with something bigger mm -hmm. than just playing notes on right. a page. And, uh, I'm, and it, and it took a long, it, it took a long while to figure mm -hmm. that out. But then what I realized eventually was that that's what I've been doing mm -hmm. my whole life. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's, you know, whether it was me, elevating the way that I played the piano mm -hmm. in front of people or when I was in high school learning about video production before digital video when it was mm -hmm. still really hard to do this stuff right and uh, you know just regular videos and you you take the most cynical audiences like the high school senior class <laughs> they, they can get pretty cynical mm -hmm. and you hold them spellbound mm -hmm. and you get on get into college and, and you get into radio and you learn how to communicate mm -hmm. through the microphone without seeing anyone in front of you and mm -hmm. you get out to los angeles you go to film school and you end up talking about okay let's make tv but let's mm -hmm. not just be, make regular stuff it's like right. stuff that actually connects with people mm -hmm. in their hearts and minds mm -hmm. and so really what it all becomes is it's all about elevating mm -hmm. communication right. and using storytelling to create human connection. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's the power that we have in business. And mm -hmm. that power is available to anyone. Right. And, and it is about those connections, as you said, you know, and, and um, as, as you were talking, you know, I thought it's, it is in essence, you know, you're talking about, you know, music from the soul. It's your soul connecting with someone else's soul. Yeah. And I don't care if you're selling something very basic, you know, like, you know, potato chips. You mm -hmm. know, you're still, there are ways to be able to do that. 100%. 100%. I mean, now, if you're free to lay and your job is to sell a million bags of the stuff, mm -hmm. you're probably going to go about that in a different way right. than if you're a, than if you're a smaller company mm -hmm. and you have your own special brand of potato chips right. and you're looking to come, you're looking to stand out as separate and mm -hmm. unique from right. the free delays of right. the world. You might talk about how they're made. You know, it's a family that, that, you know, family that has done this for, you know, 200 years, things like that, you know, things that people go, wow, let's, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and I love it, especially when 
advertisers do the stories, um, you know, and, and of course, one of the, the biggest is Bush, you know, Anheuser-Busch. And mm-hmm. we're not going to talk about the little issue that they have going on right now, but we're going to talk about the Clydesdales, you know, because oh, yes. the Clydesdales, it, it, the, that horse is not selling you beer. But when you see this, you know, we, we get so wrapped up in those commercials and when they added things like the puppy and, you know, all of those various things. And, and of course, one of the most moving was the, the one that they did for September 11th. They only broadcast it once. And, you know, and I get chills just sitting here thinking about it. I mean, you know, the, they are the masters of storytelling um, mm-hmm. because then, you know, when you're in the store and you're looking at, you know, all of these different beers, somehow that pops back into your head that, oh, okay. You know, Hey, I, I remember the Clydesdale. I'll, I'll just buy some, some beer today, you know, get the, get some Anheuser-Busch. Yeah. Well, and it's, and it's one of those things where, you know, in, in marketing, in marketing, it's easy to talk about, let's let, you know, don't talk about, the features talk mm-hmm. about the benefits right. and, and really what, what I'd like to dig into is the idea of it's not the benefits. It's the, what the benefits get you and right. the, and, and, and the emotion mm-hmm. connected to the benefits. Mm-hmm. Cause a lot of people, they talk about things like uh, when the iPhone first came out or, mm-hmm. or when the iPod came, mm-hmm. came out and everyone was saying, Hey, we have, we have um, this, gadget that Mm -hmm. runs at 128 megabits per second which everybody goes it's a what 128 (laughs) what you can Mm -hmm. how how many how many megabytes Mm -hmm. stay on this and then along comes apple Mm -hmm. under the genius of steve jobs and Mm -hmm. they say we can get you a thousand songs in your pocket right now that that people went ding 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 however Mm -hmm. that is not the end of the story Mm -hmm. It be, be, because you, you can tell listening to that, you mm-hmm. you can tell that, okay, well, it's not just about how many megabytes you can mm-hmm. fit on this little stick. Mm-hmm. It's about, you can get the thousand songs in your pocket, mm-hmm. but that having a thousand songs in your pocket is not the point. Mm-hmm. It's the freedom right. of having a thousand mm-hmm. songs in your pocket. It's the joy mm-hmm. of being able to have your soundtrack of your life mm-hmm. in your ears when you're walking down mm-hmm. the street. And so when you have that camp, the, all those TV commercials that Apple dropped at that point mm-hmm. where it's even black silhouettes of people mm-hmm. just dancing with right. ear pods mm-hmm. and holding this iPod, mm-hmm. they had the thousand songs in their pocket, mm-hmm. but it was not about the iPod. It mm-hmm. was not even about the music. Mm-hmm. It was not about how many you could get in on that right. on that thing. It was about the freedom of mm-hmm. having the music that you love. Right. And and of course, you know, Apple, they're masters at storytelling and and always have been. Um, you know, and 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 it's funny because when you know they might slide a bit, they you know, people notice. And you know, it's like with any of the the especially the big advertisers, if they deviate in any way, people are like, wait a minute. Because the story doesn't connect. There's all of a sudden mm-hmm. a mismatch. Um, and I think that's what may scare the average business owner is thinking, how do I find that magic sauce? Um, you know, and, and so let's talk more about that because you call it strategic and it is strategic storytelling. So sure. how do we figure that out? So here's the thing. It is easy to sleep on the idea of story because it is so inherently familiar Mm -hmm. because story is inherently human right it describes it is a vehicle to describe our moment-to-moment life Mm -hmm. it is a vehicle to describe how one human being interacts with another human being Mm -hmm. i mean it really is that foundational Mm -hmm. and so it's easy to say oh well that eh, you know people tell stories all the time and they do and a lot of times people tell stories flippantly Right. Or or without any thought. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, it's easy to have the place where familiarity breeds contempt. Mm -hmm. So the place that I encourage people to go is the idea of adding strategic elements to the storytelling, the idea of telling stories on purpose for a specific Mm -hmm. goal. So that's that's the starting point. It's not okay, let's just, um, you know, stand by the water cooler or whatever 
gathering spot mm-hmm. post COVID life brings about, you know, do we still have water coolers? I suppose some there people do. Coffee makers. There you go. Yeah. So, you, you know, you can, you can do that and say, talk about what you, what happened over the weekend or what mm-hmm. you did last night, but that is more of the uh, discardable, mm-hmm. the, the disposable kind of a thing. Right. So when we talk about strategic storytelling, mm-hmm. the idea is generally you want to say you you want to do what Stephen Covey always talked about in his seven habits of highly effective people. You want to begin with the end in mind. Mm-hmm. So you say, well, what am I looking mm-hmm. to accomplish? Right. And so, I mean, and that could even be as simple as, you know, we want to increase in, in mm-hmm. quant, want to increase revenue. We want to mm-hmm. increase sales of X product mm-hmm. in uh, in Y campaign or mm-hmm. whatever. So then you back up from that and you say, okay, well, what do I want my audience to know or to do? Mm-hmm. What do I want them to learn? Mm-hmm. Uh, because let's let's be let's be clear. When it comes to communication in business, communication shows up in different places, and it's mm-hmm. not all external facing marketing because it can very much be internal mm-hmm. with a sales conversation. It can be internal with uh, internal communications because mm-hmm. if you are a business that is more than a handful of, of employees, mm-hmm. there is no guarantee that everyone who is working with the company knows why they're there other than right. I get a paycheck. Mm-hmm. You know, so this is why that communication Mm -hmm. needs to start backwards from the desired goal, Mm -hmm. whether it's revenue, whether it's employee retention, Mm -hmm. whether it's alignment around a strategic initiative, whether it's whether it's agreement around a certain plan or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's when you are in a place where you can say, okay, what is a story Mm -hmm. that I can tell? that will resonate with this specific audience Mm -hmm. and this specific challenge that we're facing. And what is a lesson that we can draw from that story Mm -hmm. that we then connect with the goal that we want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that is a very high level idea of what strategic storytelling Mm -hmm. is in business. Right. Yeah. We're not just telling stories to tell stories. Right. Um, You know, and, and I shared with you off the air that I was going to mention this, I was with a group of, of my business associates in person. Oh my gosh, we were in person. This was, nice. you know, it, yeah, I hadn't done this in several years. And, you know, and, and we were talking and somebody asked me something and I didn't even open my mouth and somebody else said, don't answer with a story. And I kind of looked at, I must've looked a little startled and they said, you always answer a question with a story. And I thought, okay, I probably do. And so, you know, I sat there and I thought about it, you know, and, and really thought about it later. And I thought, okay, well, that kind of hurt my feelings. But of course, they didn't mean it in, in that way. I mean, yeah. they were, but I also thought, am I doing it too often? You know, when I should just be saying yes, no, I mean, not real brief, you know, because then, then of course, it threw me. I was like, okay, I have to answer short, you know, and, and all this. And I thought, no, that's not natural either. But, it, it it all is because the stories have to be appropriate and yes. it's not always the time and the place to be sharing that story. Agreed. Well, so here's the thing. Storytelling is not a panacea. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not a cure all magic bullet. Mm-hmm. Having said that, when you use storytelling in the right way, in the right context, Mm -hmm. it is ridiculously powerful. Right. It is incredibly Mm -hmm. powerful in ways that other things just aren't. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is you have, and you know, the, the things that happen to the brain chemistry of the audience, Mm -hmm. when they hear a story, I mean, if you, if you go on, on Google and you look up storytelling brain chemistry or Mm -hmm. or things of that. Uh, If you look up things like narrative transportation, Mm -hmm. storytelling, Mm -hmm. uh, it is incredible the Mm -hmm. research and the findings that people are are bringing to light about this is what happens in the brain of people Mm -hmm. when they tell stories. Mm -hmm. They literally start identifying with the character traits of the people in the stories. Right. They can sit in an fMRI Mm-hmm. You know, basically a, a machine scanning your brain mm-hmm. and it will it will light up the same areas of your mm-hmm. brain as if 
the person was the, the person hearing the story was literally experiencing the mm-hmm. story firsthand themselves. Right. That's what happens to people's brains. It is so powerful because when that brain activity, when those hormones start running through our bloodstream, that means we start feeling these feelings mm-hmm. of empathy and understanding right. and trust. Mm-hmm. And when you empathize with people, when you like people, mm-hmm. when you trust people, you are in hugely more likely to say yes right. to what they're asking right. you. It's that no like trust factor. 100%. <clears throat> and so it's one of those things where storytelling is absolutely that powerful. Mm-hmm. Is storytelling the only thing that is necessary? Absolutely not. Right. Because I still because, want to know the features, the benefits, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yes. The price. Yes. <laughs> I mean, but, the, but the thing is, the, you know, there are, there are so many things competing for people's attention today. Right. The world is a very, very noisy place and getting mm-hmm. noisier every day. Mm-hmm. So it used to be that people would say, oh, you're selling something. Uh, what does it do? Mm-hmm. You know, and that's a legitimate question. Right. And people still need to get answers to that. Mm-hmm. But these days, it's far more likely that the first question that you need to answer is, why should I pay attention? Mm-hmm. Or why should I care? Right. Why should or, I stop scrolling? Why should yes. I? Yeah, all of those various things. Or how are you different? Mm-hmm. Kind of a thing, especially right. If you are in a profession, if you're mm-hmm. if you if you if you're in a business or profession where there are lots of other people <coughs> who do mm-hmm. what you do, right? And having the designation of ha- having professional de- designations, that's just table stakes. That's mm-hmm. just that's just the price of getting into the door, right? The, getting into the party to begin mm-hmm. with. But then you get into the party, and there's lots of other people just like you, and you mm-hmm. say, "Oh, well." Why should yeah? You know, why should people choose mm-hmm. me over everyone else? Right. And that is where a story is incredibly powerful, mm-hmm. especially when it's targeted strategically to a specific audience for mm-hmm. a specific goal. Right. Yeah, you know, and I mentioned price, and I deliberately mentioned it last mm-hmm. because if you have done a good job with the story, in most cases, or, and and not with with connecting with them with the story, um, in in many most almost all cases, price is not going to be a factor because they will go, Jeff, I need it. Don't care what it costs. Mm-hmm. I love it. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in. hundred percent. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the power of what happens mm-hmm. when you connect with the audience right. and what their story is, mm-hmm. what, who, who's, who mm-hmm. is their character? What mm-hmm. do they want? What's keeping them from getting it? Mm-hmm. Man. When you can help people get what they want, that's very good for business. Right, right. You know, and you mentioned knowing exactly who you're talking to. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the other thing where people have so much difficulty. And I talk about it a lot on the program is knowing who your target audience is, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and, and getting it down to that finite number. You know, when people always, you know, we ask them, who's your target audience? And they smile sweetly at us and they say, everyone, no, Um, (laughs) you know, and, and it's, we need to figure out exactly who we're talking to, because if we're not telling the right story to the right person, they're not going to pay attention. You know, if, if I'm talking to, you know, say if, if someone's talking to me about, and I, I had this happen the other day, the benefits of something with children well, I don't have kids. I don't have grandkids. And so I was like, okay, whatever. I mean, you know, I was on to the next thing because Mm -hmm. it, it didn't pertain at all. Now the the same product might have applied to me if the story was different. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's where people really have to think, okay, who am I talking to? And sometimes you're going to go, no, not my audience, not, you know, I'll be nice. I'll be polite, but move on. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, and, and, and it can be really, really challenging to be in mm-hmm. a place where you have a product or a service that is genuinely useful. I mean, if you right. sell, I, I think I heard you in a conversation talking about, uh, talking about skincare mm-hmm. and well, right. everyone, everyone has skin. Mm-hmm. Everyone mm-hmm. has skin. Well, you're not wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. The challenge mm-hmm. <laughs> Last time I checked, pretty much everyone has skin. Mm-hmm. The challenge comes in with 
creating the connection and mm -hmm. creating the connection with people so they can say, okay, I'll listen. Right. Because that's, again, mm -hmm. it is such a noisy world. We have to be able to say, why should people listen? Mm -hmm. Why should people care? Mm -hmm. And this is why when you talk about things that mm -hmm. people care about, this is how you can unlock magic doors that you never thought possible. Mm -hmm. And not only can you do this, you can do this with the most boring, air quote, boring mm -hmm. products on the face of the planet. Because I guarantee, even if, well, even if the, even if what you're selling is your own personal services or mm -hmm. your own, you know, you know, and, and you think I have no stories, I have no, nothing to talk about. Number one, this is not true. If mm -hmm. you are alive and you have a pulse, mm -hmm. guaranteed you have moments in your life that can be crafted into TED talk worthy stories right. mm -hmm. guaranteed. And even if you, and you can literally be selling toothpaste, you can be selling asphalt on the, on the, on the street. You can mm -hmm. be selling the most boring thing, mm -hmm. but guaranteed the people who are in the market for these things guaranteed, if they are a human being, there are things that they care about. Right. And, 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 you, and you're going to, they're going to go, Hey, nobody else is talking to me about it. Mm-hmm. Which is why, to your point about Budweiser, because I, you know, I like to use them as, as as examples as well. Why on earth? Why on how on earth would horses and puppies translate to billions of dollars mm -hmm. of beer sold? Right. Because that connection mm -hmm. of that connection of something on the surface to deeper level things was created on purpose mm -hmm. by the company in their marketing messaging. Right. With my clients and my coaching students, uh, we always talk about something called the thing under the thing. Mm. Because a lot of times we, you know, our marketing messages, our communication very easily can be very surface level and mm -hmm. very broad. And that is where that is where things gen they, they start boring and they stay boring. Mm -hmm. However, anytime you hear something that you think it, it, that on the surface it shouldn't it shouldn't mean much, mm -hmm. but when you start feeling something, mm -hmm. that is when there are connections to deeper level mm -hmm. things that we care about. Right. That is where that is what I call the thing under the thing, and that's mm -hmm. where those connections exist. Mm -hmm. Now, those connections can already be in existence or they can be created on purpose. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the design of, a, of an American flag, for instance, mm -hmm. so if you live in the United States and you see that design of stars and stripes in that specific design, mm -hmm. you instantly have associations with that right. that go beyond graphic design, mm -hmm. red and white stripes right. and white stars on a mm -hmm. blue field because of those existing connections mm -hmm. with our country and everything that we experience in the country, mm -hmm. all the good things and the hard things mm -hmm. and all the things of injustice and all the things that have changed and all and mm -hmm. all that. But in business, you don't have to say, oh, well, what's my brand about? Mm -hmm. Well, okay, let me back up. Yes, you do need to say that. Right. Uh, but mm -hmm. you don't have to rely on, oh, well, my brand is only about what other people say, mm -hmm. so I can't control it. Yes, mm -hmm. you can, and you must. Right. The question is, what do you connect it to? Mm -hmm. And this is why when Budweiser connects beer mm -hmm. to horses mm -hmm. and puppies, mm -hmm. it's not just about horses and puppies, it's horses representing, you know, you see slow-mo shot of a Clydesdale running across right. the field. with How can you point. not stop and go, oh my gosh, what that a, is just gorgeous. The, mm -hmm. What a magnificent mm -hmm. creature, what a symbol right. of strength and mm -hmm. freedom, this horse running in mm -hmm. the field. And then the horse hangs out with a golden Labrador retriever uh -huh. and you say, this is incredible. This right? is friendship. Mm -hmm. This is loyalty. Mm -hmm. And then the puppy gets taken away from the- You're like, from, no. You know, mm -hmm. No, this is this is loss and grieving. Mm -hmm. And this and is all- And the puppy comes back. And the puppy comes <laughs> back and it's like, oh, wish fulfillment. Mm -hmm. All these things, though, these mm -hmm. are all things under the thing. Right. 
that nine out of 10 people have no idea are there, right. but you are being, you are being affected mm -hmm. by it because mm -hmm. friendship, loyalty, loss, all those kind of ideas mm -hmm. are things that human right. beings care about. Right. Bush, Anheuser-Busch attached puppies and horses mm -hmm. to friendship, loyalty, mm -hmm. loss, and reconnection. Right. They did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. And then they said, this is what we stand for mm -hmm. with our beer. And everyone says, I want that beer, man. Right. You know, yeah. and even works. if they've never, you know, they're city people. They've yeah. never seen a Clydesdale. They've probably seen a horse, <coughs> but maybe not a Clydesdale. And they've certainly seen puppies. Um, <coughs> but, but yeah, people who've never seen things like, or had those experiences. I mean, I've actually seen the Anheuser-Busch horses. Um, and of course they're like gigantic and they're so, they're so massive. cool. But um you know, and, and, and you, you learn, you stay out of their way. Um, <laughs> but because they really are very big, but, but yeah, you know, never people who have never ever, and will never see them in real life, still look at that and go, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and of course the important thing with them is it has been consistent, you know, those, mm -hmm. those horses, I don't even know when they first started using the, the horses. It's been quite a long time. Um, but you know, it's not, they don't, if they, if they have a different horse, there's a reason for it in the story. The Clydesdales yeah. are still there. Um, they don't switch to something like, you know, goats. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's, it's the Clydesdales. The Clydesdales are always there. And, and, yeah. and that's part of it too, is then we're thinking, they're consistent also. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, the other thing that I think is, is always so important with all of this is that little word authenticity. Okay. Um, you know, and, and I find it very interesting, especially with celebrities who are telling the stories. They're telling the stories to sell something, right? We know sure. there's, they're doing that. But when it comes across as being inauthentic, I immediately think, well, then why would I want to buy it? I mean, you know, when Jennifer Aniston is selling $10 face cream, she might actually really use $10 face cream, but I'm thinking she probably doesn't. And yeah. so then it's like, why would I believe them? Uh, you know, and, and so I always have a, a, you know, an, an issue with um, a, you know, celebrity spokespeople. Are they, is that something really that they're going to use? Uh, you know, and, and, and I'm always, you know, I think, you know, that the person who has it should be the people who are selling it, but that doesn't always work. Um, sure. But, but, you know, and then we've also seen examples where someone has <clears throat> borrowed someone else's story and they're using it as their own. Mm. So how important is it when you're crafting these stories to, to really be authentic? Well, here's the thing. As you say, authenticity is becoming more and more important mm -hmm. in any medium mm -hmm. ever invented. And I'm not just talking about the internet. I'm talking television, uh, movies, film, mm -hmm. the printed word, mm -hmm. literally paintings, scribblings <coughs> on the cave, mm -hmm. on the cave walls, every bit of it, every invent, every medium ever invented by humanity goes through a process where the audience evolves. Mm -hmm. The audience changes over time and what they expect at the beginning of this medium is always different when that medium reaches maturity. And what happens with technology is that change accelerates. So, I mean, you can look at the history of painting, for instance, and it, uh, it, it took a very, very long time for certain changes in style to happen in the world of painting because it was a much less technologically driven world. You see that change happening in technology, boom, just like that. And when you get in a technology driven world where it's all about, okay, let's use technology to mass, uh, to, you know, to mass produce messages that get put across millions, get reach millions of eyeballs and ears, people initially say, this is new and amazing. I love this. 
And this is what, and we've seen this happen in the early 2000s when, mm -hmm. when internet marketing first came on. And then uh, the marketers came on and said, okay, we're going to do this, the this slimy, the slimy, sleazy snake oil salesman stuff, mm -hmm. but online, mm -hmm. Google and Facebook started cracking down on that and right. says, um, no, that's mm -hmm. not cool. Don't mm -hmm. do that because that creates a bad user experience mm -hmm. for the people on our platforms. Right. And, and the then they're going to leave our platforms. Oh yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And so, and so the, the platforms said, no, that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you have to fit within these guidelines mm -hmm. and that those guidelines have continued to evolve and people's mm -hmm. expectations have continued to evolve. Mm -hmm. So back to your point of how important is authenticity? Mm -hmm. It is hugely important. It is incredibly important mm -hmm. and becoming even more important by the day. Right. Now, the challenge when it comes to storytelling is challenge, uh, the, the storytelling has a reputation of being difficult to do well. Mm -hmm. And that is not wrong. The caveat with that is it is the most difficult to do well when you are telling stories in a long format. Mm -hmm. This is why people complain about there's so much bad TV and bad, bad movies out there because everyone knows what they like. Mm -hmm. But there's this really delicate balance when you're making movies or TV or long format storytelling, when you're writing novels mm -hmm. or you're making a series of movies, there's a very delicate balance that you have to ride of what does the audience ex expect? How mm -hmm. can I give them what they want mm -hmm. without completely upsetting their expectations? Right. And how can I surprise them? Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult to, to surprise mm -hmm. an audience on a mature platform. Mm -hmm. So because of that, long form storytelling is very, very difficult to do well. Mm -hmm. The good news for us in business, we almost never have to go long form. Right. We're so almost the 30 awesome. second elevator pitch stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so that is the good news. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about that is the shorter the storytelling, the fewer moving parts you need mm -hmm. for it to work well. Right. So when that happens, this idea of authenticity mm -hmm. becomes it it remains as important as ever but it is easier to get there mm -hmm. if you are speaking from a story that you know and you believe mm -hmm. yourself right you know and uh, you know we've all heard it said that you know it's it's difficult to remember a lie you always remember the truth and so when you're telling the story if you somehow fabricated or mm. embellished, then you have to remember to do that every time, or people are going to call you on it. But when mm -hmm. you stick to the truth, then you remember it. Yeah. I'll tell you, there is, you know, people, people talk about attaching stories to products. Mm -hmm. um, there is this, <laughs> I just before getting on, uh, getting, getting on this call here for this recording, mm -hmm. uh, I was down in the kitchen getting lunch. And when you go to our fridge, you mm -hmm. open up, you open up our fridge and there's usually a bag in there of bread or bagels or English muffins. Mm -hmm. And it is, uh, and, and often it's from a company called Dave's Killer Bread. Ooh. Now, are you familiar with Dave's Killer Bread? No. Okay. It's really, really good bread. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing about it. The, when I first found out about Dave's Killer Bread, mm -hmm. I saw the logo on the side of the bag and it's mm -hmm. this dude with this black hair and a long ponytail and he's holding an electric guitar. So, you know, rock star, Dave's killer, okay. bread, killer mm -hmm. music, really great bread mm -hmm. -na -na kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but then you, then you see on the side, it says 15 years, 15 mm -hmm. years in prison. Oh, and I saw that. And I thought hmm. that's a heck of a side. Uh, that's a heck of a, headline to put on the side of a bag of bagels. Mm -hmm. And so and what why? Happened, mm -hmm. And and here's why because they tell the story of mm -hmm. Dave, one of the co-founders of the company. He made some choices mm -hmm. growing up that led him to be put into prison for 15 mm -hmm. years and when he got out, he was having a really hard time getting work. Mm -hmm. And uh his brother was working at the family bakery at the time saw how hard it was for Dave at the mm -hmm. time and said, you know, I've seen a change in him. Mm 
-hmm. I've seen a change in you. Why don't you come work for us mm -hmm. and let's see what we can do here. Mm -hmm. Dave became the director of product at the family bakery mm -hmm. and developed this incredibly tasty, delicious bread. And not even that, now the company has, a, a, depending on, you know, my understanding is it's about a third of its employees are hired mm -hmm. Uh, even though they have a criminal background, right. they're giving them a second chance because that is mm -hmm. what that is the value. That right. is the human value that mm -hmm. this company wants to attach mm -hmm. to bagels and bread mm -hmm. and English muffins. Right. And this is why after I, I mean, the first time I saw this, I was standing in the kitchen and I'm going, I'm having feels for a bag of bagels. Yeah. What the heck oh, is my going gosh. On? Uh -huh. But the thing is, when I go to the grocery store now and mm -hmm. I see 50 kinds of bread, right. you go on, to Dave's, I go to mm -hmm. Dave's killer bread because mm -hmm. they believe in second chances. Right. And so do I. Right. And it might even cost more. Yes. But you're willing to pay that because of their story. Mm -hmm. And because of the things that they have attached mm -hmm. on purpose. Right. And I will even say one of the first questions that people often have is like, okay, well, what if I didn't spend 15 years in prison? What if my yeah. life has been mm -hmm. pretty, you know, I've mm -hmm. gotten straight A's and all that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm I'm the, the goody two shoes. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. This is where this is where you go to a scenario, uh, you, you go to a scenario more like, well, is beer inherently about puppies and horses? Mm -hmm. Of course not. Those connections were created mm -hmm. on purpose. Right. And those connections can be created mm -hmm. through the messaging, through the storytelling mm -hmm. in any business for any product, for any person. Right. You know, and I think it's, it's important for us to have those, you know, it's obviously important for us to have those stories, but to have kind of those backstories about the, the, the people who own the companies, um, mm -hmm. you know, because as you said, there's so much out there. It's so cluttered. Frequently, we go to the about us page, right? Mm -hmm. And and we want to read a little bit more about them. And if it's, you know, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. yeah. If it's, you know, I, I've been a, you know, well, I, I did an interview uh, yesterday and, uh, or in the, in the interview that, that aired Tuesday, actually it was, sure. um, of this young woman, absolutely fabulous young woman who um, has a podcast and it's on missing persons mm. and her story, her true story is that she could have easily been one of those missing persons because she was, uh, she was basically human trafficked at a very young age. Oh, wow. um, and, you know, and, and, and she told her story and it was of course an incredibly moving story. Um, but that is why she does what she does. Now there are probably some people who would go, okay. Oh, okay. Then you didn't want to be with them anyway. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But because she shares her personal story, it was, it was just incredible, um, you know, and, and, but yeah, again, you know, you can share your personal story. Like I tell people, you know, I, I am a proud university of Colorado supporter go buffs. Right. Mm -hmm. And now everybody's like, Oh my God, coach, coach prime, Deion Sanders, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> um, but it, it, your stories give away as, as you've been saying, a way for people to connect. And I think so many times business people think, oh, no, we don't want to put that, put that out there. Now, you know, there is a, such a thing as TMI, sure. but you want to Absolutely. put that information there that allows people then to connect with you, um, you know, and, and, and not to shy away from the warts, the bad stuff, because sometimes that really is what makes somebody connect with you. Oh, man. I mean, that is the very essence of life mm -hmm. is <clears throat> engaging with struggle right. and overcoming struggle. Mm -hmm. I know you care about that a lot yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, I, I talk about, uh, I, I talk about the, the actual definition of what a story is. Mm -hmm. um, the cleanest definition that I can get starts, uh, starts with a character who wants something, overcomes obstacles to get it and experiences transformation as a result. Mm -hmm. So defining a story in those terms we see that this is what we are all living in our mm -hmm. daily lives. 
this is what everyone in our audience in, in our prospects mm -hmm. and in our clients, they are living through mm -hmm. that in their whole lives. This is what applies to our business mm -hmm. as an entity in, in and of itself. And obstacles and challenges and hard things are a fact of life. Mm -hmm. They are inescapable. Right. The very best stories involve taking on incredible challenges. Mm -hmm. And so this is why when I look at when I look at business marketing and I'm going, especially B2B, I'm going, mm -hmm. this is the place where humanity goes to die. Right. I mean, well, and businesses why should I care? Yeah, ah, businesses you know? don't buy from businesses. It's yeah. still people. And I think that's what so many people forget is it is always person to person. hundred percent. And even if, and even, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that B2B marketing is easy because you, know, mm -hmm. you try, you try selling in, in, in some, at the enterprise level where there are right. 10 people mm -hmm. who have to all say yes in order oh, for yeah. the yeah. project mm -hmm. to go through, you know, mm -hmm. still, as you say, they we we are all humans, and mm -hmm. we all have to connect with human beings mm -hmm. in terms of what they want. Even if it's the idea of communicating with the C-suite, mm -hmm. this will here's how this will, and this is how mm -hmm. this will affect your revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, and you talk with engineering. This is how <coughs> this will, this will streamline mm -hmm. your process. Talk to marketing. This is how mm -hmm. this will, you know, this is how this will increase mm -hmm. the number of leads that you can pass mm -hmm. on to sales. It's just all that stuff. But if you approach it from mm -hmm. what do people want? Mm -hmm. What what is getting in their way? Mm -hmm. And how can we get them to get what they want? Mm -hmm. So they see that the they see that the, the change that they're wanting to see happen. This is how, this is what a story is. And mm -hmm. this is how we figure out how to connect with people. Right. Right. And as we said, you have to have the stories that are appropriate for who you're talking to. You know, yes. so if you have 10 people that you have to go through that whole process with, then you may very well need 10 different stories, um, you know, and, and, and some of them will be longer. Some of them will be shorter. I mean, you know, the CEO might need the abbreviated two sentence version, mm -hmm. but the person, you know, and, and, you know, but, you know, somebody else is going to need a little bit longer story. And I think that's where sometimes people get caught up too, is they have one story. Yeah. They have the, you know, we've, I've, I've written it down. It's my 30 second elevator pitch and it's all I'm, it's what I know. It's what I'm comfortable with. Yeah. Um, and again, they forget that they, you know, they're not just talking to somebody in an elevator. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it is incredibly important. It is incredibly important to know who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, um, the people are really tempted to craft stories in a way that is very broad mm -hmm. and uh, takes place over a lot of time. Mm -hmm. uh, I came across, and, and, and that is where, that is where emotional impact drops. Mm -hmm. If things are overly general, this, is, you know, that is a sign that your story will probably not have as much impact right. or memorability. Mm -hmm. I came across a quote recently from the author, James Joyce. It says, in the particular is contained the universal. Mm. And when we're, when we're applying that idea to storytelling and communication, and you, when you apply this to what the, the results that mm -hmm. you can get, if you decide to go down, down the Google rabbit hole for fMRI research, storytelling, mm -hmm. brain chemistry, all those kind of search strings, mm -hmm. you will find that there is something called the co-creative process that when people are truly engaged in a story, mm -hmm. it is when they are completely focused and giving you the attention and they are thinking about times when they have been in a similar situation. Right. Mm -hmm. So to Joyce's quote, in the particular is contained the universal. Mm -hmm. It is far more, it is far easier mm -hmm. and far more likely that our audience will connect with a story when we get specific, mm -hmm. which is why I didn't just start out this conversation by saying, yeah, I've, I've, I've been known as Jeff, the piano guy for the first 20 years of my life. Mm -hmm. And I was played by ear. Because we would have gone, oh. You know, I mean, okay. and that's, that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's, that's okay. And it's nice. true. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. But when you talk about the geeky kid mm -hmm. who always wanted to, who, who was doing the best that he could right. and he played the notes on the page mm -hmm. and there was a moment, there is a moment, mm -hmm. a specific moment where one specific person says, there's a higher level to this. Mm -hmm. And so that's what, you know, people sometimes talk about what are the elements to a memorable story. Mm -hmm. And so these are, these are the, these are some of the elements that make a story memorable. You mm -hmm. have a very specific character, you have a specific moment, mm -hmm. you have details and you have genuine human emotion. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't have to be ugly crying. It can right. be an 11 year old looking at a church musician in the, you know, a, a lady who's a church musician mm -hmm. and thinking, this is really stupid. And I think you're full. <laughs> of, I think you're full and, of it. But we all went, oh yeah, we've thought that before. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, you know, just looking at someone telling us someone telling us something and we think you are so full of it, but mm -hmm. then you realize later on, oh, they were right. Mm, and I yeah. learned something. Mm -hmm. Any of us ever been there before? Yeah. Like when our parents talk to us or the boss or, mm -hmm, yeah, we've gone, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So that is where, that is where the need for specificity, mm -hmm. having very specific characters, what a specific character, specific moment, mm -hmm. genuine human emotion, and details mm -hmm. in a story that uh, those four elements right there will be incredibly powerful towards mm -hmm. crafting something that will actually jump out and stick in mm -hmm. someone's memory. Right. You know, and, and it is about being memorable, you know, because as you said, there is so much clutter out there. You know, it, it used to be, we had to see something, what, seven times before we bought it. And now right. it's like, 20, who 30, who knows? I mean, I, I don't even think they can to. test it anymore um, yeah. because we're gone now, you know, and, and, and there's the other thing of, you know, our attention span. They've now decided that fish, goldfish in a bowl have a longer attention span than we do. And I'm pretty sure that's me. I'm like squirrel. Right. Yeah. And, and so if you don't catch somebody's attention in that first, you know, 10 seconds, you've lost them. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and now you can sometimes reel them back in, but it really is about kind of doing that, you know, you know, getting them and then making sure that what you're saying is pertinent to them and important to them. Yes. Well, and again, that, you know, talking about what people expect in any given medium mm -hmm. and surprising them, getting their attention. I mean, mm -hmm. it's easy to say, okay, well, you have to hook people's attention right off the bat, right. which is becoming more and more important, especially mm -hmm. if you're trying to put a message out on a, on a platform mm -hmm. where everyone is going scroll, scroll, mm -hmm. scroll. Right. Good luck with that. Mm -hmm. That is, that is not anyone who says it's easy to do has mm -hmm. never tried to do it. Right. So, but yeah. the challenge with that is you can try to get people's attention by doing something outlandish or crazy, mm -hmm. but then it becomes more and more difficult to be more outlandish and right. more crazy mm -hmm. the next time and the next and the next right. and the next. So there is absolutely a balance that has to be struck between mm -hmm. having an engaging idea mm -hmm. versus, you know, doing something visually crazy or, <coughs> you know, who knows? Right. Yeah. There was only one time where Apple could throw the hammer through the, the big screen, right? If they had done something else like that again, we would have all gone, meh. You know, it. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so it's, it's, it's always so interesting, you know, and, and it's funny, I was looking, you've created a special page for us on your website and you use my graphic on there, you know, thank mm -hmm. you very much. And I was looking at it and I've had this graphic for several years and it says real life stories and techniques to power up your business. Yeah. I didn't even, I, you know, I didn't even think about that anymore. Like I said, we've had this for years, but it really is about that. You know, it's how, you know, those real life stories and then how do you use it to power up your business? And, and again, I don't care what it is that you're doing. You can, you know, you can do that. So, you know, Jeff, we've only got about five minutes left. Sure. And so I know, isn't this fun? Um, you know, we'll, we definitely have to have you on again, because I think this is such an important topic that people just, you know, they, they don't understand or they're scared of, 
or all of those things. But, you know, tell us a little bit more about how people find you and what are the services that you provide? Sure. Well, there is one URL that uh, I'd like to send folks to from your audience. Mm -hmm. uh, got some special resources just for you, uh, the audience of the Business Power Hour, and that is at storygreenlight.com slash power hour. That's storygreenlight.com slash power hour. It's got some resources just for you guys and some ways to keep the conversation going there. And there are, depending on, yeah, you know, people talk about stories evolving. Um, it is super exciting to see what people are wanting in terms of shaping their own stories. Mm -hmm. Those things are evolving as well. So uh, as of this recording, as of this recording, there's actually a holding page in terms of what's on the consulting page, because uh, do I do do one on one consultings mm -hmm. with individuals and businesses mm -hmm. and groups, uh, group trainings, whatever works, whatever you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say it is super cool to be able to work with people to say, these are the messages mm -hmm. that are going to unlock those memorable moments mm -hmm. for you and your business or you, uh, even if you're going to apply this to your own direction in your mm -hmm. own life, because it can absolutely take that path and uh, your communication inside your business or outside your business mm -hmm. or wherever you want to take it. So it's cool stuff. I love it. I love it. Well, give us the URL again. It is storygreenlight.com slash power hour. Yeah. And as I said, we have to have you on again, because one of the things I didn't even get a chance to ask about was why is the stoplight in your logo upside down? You've got green on the top. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll have to have you on again, because I'm sure there's a story that's that's oh, part yes. of that. Um, <laughs> you know, and and so, you know, that's that's going to be great to have you on again, because as I said, you know, and as 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 you um, have been saying all along, we can't be successful in business without telling stories. So we want to help people know how to do that. Um, you know, and, and so we'll have you on again. But until then, do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave everyone with? You know, it's. It's interesting to think about what we're all seeking in our lives. Uh, we have this idea when you talk about that definition of what a story is, a character who wants something, overcomes obstacles to get it, and experiences transformation as a result. There are uh, there are a lot of obstacles in the world that are that don't re represent the way that things should be. There are goals and desires that we all have for ourselves and for the people that we love and for the businesses that we're building, and uh, they have not yet taken place. But when we have these kind of messages that speak to what people are truly seeking after, and we help them get what they what they are seeking after, and we have the privilege of serving people to bring change into the world, it is an incredibly rewarding thing. And strategic storytelling is an incredibly powerful tool that is available to anyone to make that happen for you too. I love it. Well, I'm Deb Creer. I've been having so much fun talking with Jeff Barch of Story Greenlight. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.